Hi, welcome to my YouTube channel and in this video we are going to discuss another 5 important JavaScript questions that are usually asked in interviews to check how deep knowledge do you have of JavaScript. So the pattern of asking these questions is you will be usually given a block of code and you have to predict the probable outcome from that block of code. So without wasting any further time, let's go to our code runner and check. But before that, you know the drill that you have to like and subscribe to my channel so that you can watch all my upcoming videos and so that I can bring this valuable content to you. So let's go to our code runner. Okay, so your first question is that you have been given two functions foo and foo1. Both of them are returning the same object uh, that's having a property bar and uh, its value is hello. Both of them are doing the same thing. So what do you think is going to get print on console when I call foo and when I call foo1? So that's a question. So when I call uh, foo, it's going to return bar hello. And that's what exactly we expected. But if I call foo1, it's going to return undefined. Why? Because in JavaScript, by default, the end of line is detected by a semicolon. But if you will not provide any semicolon, it will by default consider that this is the end of line. So you are not ret you return, so it will be considered as like this. So this is just a block of code which is there in the function, but it, it never executed. So nothing is returned basically, and hence you are just getting undefined. So that is a very important question. You need to know how actually the end of lines and, and how exactly if even if you just miss this curly brackets right here if if you would have print this like that then it would have worked perfectly but since you just um, moved your parenthesis one line down it changed the entire context of your function and what exactly it's returning so you should be very clear of answering these questions and very clear on how javascript actually work uh, for these sort of contexts so I hope that first question is clear. Let's move on to the second one. So the second one is, let's say if I console log 0.1 plus 0.2, and I say whether it's equals to 0.3. So what do you think is going to be uh, the result of it? That's going to say false. Why? Because this is a precision based calculation. And precision based calculation is never going to end on one decimal point it's going to go at 0.3333333 or something like that so if i want to console log um, just this to just check what is the output from this you will get that 0.3000000 until like some decimal points so when you will compare both of these it will not be equal so it's not always uh, the calculations are very uh, sort of in on a precision based especially when you are working on with a decimal points in javascript so you should be very familiar with answering this type of questions as well so let's move on to the third one okay so our third question is that you have to write a function that if you pass any string to that function then that function should return whether that string is a palindrome or not but the caveat is that you just have to write it in one line basically or less than 130 40 characters so let's see so what do we mean by a palindrome uh, you must know that whether if you read that from start or from the end the word is always same for example madam if you will read it from beginning or from the end it will always be madam but the same is not true for uh, this name kiran so from the beginning it will be Kiran but from the uh, end it will be Narik or something like that. Right? So uh, how to do it? It's very simple that you will have a string so you will split your string. So what? once you will split your uh, string you can apply your reverse method that we have inbuilt in JavaScript and once you have that you can join it back and now you will have a reversed string. And you can check if that reverse to string is equal to your original string and if that is equals to your original string it will return true otherwise it will return false so for the first case you can see it's true for the second case you can see it's false uh, if someone is not clear how actually that works let's start to take it uh, slowly so as you can see once you will string dot split 
it will split the string and make it an array that's comma separated all the characters are separated like that and now you will reverse this when you will reverse this since this is the same as from the beginning but this is different right and now you will simply join them back and now you will join them back you will get madam and you will get narik and when you are comparing it with your original string for the first case it's the same but for the second case it's not the same so i hope this question is also clear very often we ask question especially from the beginners this is very very expected that you should know that uh, the basics uh, inbuilt functionalities and an inbuilt utilities that we already have in javascript how to use it to actually write a very expressive and very clean code so that's the third question and now let's move on to the fourth one so here you have a function that take two parameter a and b and return the sum of these but the trick here is that it should work for both of these as syntaxes console log sum if you pass 2 and 3 or if you pass it like sum 2 and then and 3 like that it should work both ways so um what what exactly is this this is something that you are calling sum on just one parameter and this is some anonymous function that you are calling and you are passing one argument in that anonymous function but for the first case is simple that you get a and b both but for the second case you are just getting one parameter in some function okay so how can we do that um there can be two cases right uh, where both of these parameters are available or there is just one parameter available so a will always be there but based on whether b is there or not you will detect whether you are dealing with case 1 or you are dealing with case 2 so if b is not undefined that means that b is there so if b is there you are simply dealing with the first case and in this case you will just return a plus b but if b is not there then you are dealing with something like this like there is this function sum and there is this anonymous function as well so what you will do you will create one anonymous function b this is anonymous function and from here now you have this anonymous function and you already have the sum as well which is taking a as the first parameter so simply return a plus b like that from here let's check for the first one it's 5 and if you check for the second one it's also 5 So this is one of the very trickiest question that is usually asked in interviews, but it's not at all trickier. It's just that you need to understand it step by step. Let's move on to the last one, which is very interesting one and my one of the favorites when I usually want to understand whether the uh, interviewee actually understand the type coercion system in JavaScript. So as you can see, uh, there are some console logs here, and we need to predict what is the probable outcome from these console logs. So the first one is one plus two plus two. So how does that happen? So this is plus. So when the plus sees a string on one of its side, it will also coerce the second um, operator as well to a string. So when it sees plus, it says one plus. Oh, this is a string. So it will also convert this as a string. So oh. now everything of them are a string so 1 plus 2 plus 2 and they simply concatenate with each other so your answer should be 1 2 2 2 that's exactly there now let's check this 1 plus plus 2 now here you can see that this is plus here so that acts as a unary operator that converts the string to a number so it will go here it will convert the string to a number so this will be a 2 as a number 1 plus 2 both sides of the plus are number so they will add so the it will become 3 now 3 plus 2 here the other side is string so now 3 will also be converted into a string so the answer should be 3 2 that's exactly there okay so for the third case you can see this is minus 1 here so instead of plus unity operator for the third case uh you have minus unary operator so unary operator will convert your string to a number so one will become one as a number and then minus will be appended to it so 
as in general it will become minus 1 so it will be 1 plus minus 1 and the mathematical uh, equivalent of this would be 0 because 1 minus 1 that's 0 so 0 plus 2 and 2 is your string so it will become 0 2 that's exactly there and now let's move on to the fourth one it's plus 1 and you know it will convert this to a number so 1 but these both are string so 1 1 2 1 1 2 that's right let's move on to the next one a minus b so a minus b so on uh, some alphabetical number you cannot perform any uh, mathematical operation right so this will result into a nan so you will say n a n nan and when you the result from this is concatenated with two it will give you n a n two let's see this n a n two and for the final case that's again the same but instead of this two as a string here it's a number so a minus b will result into n a n and when you will add anything as a number to n a n that's exactly n a n so the result of this would be n a n and when you check that out it will be n a n this is very important uh, to understand basically basically is asked to understand whether your type coercion fundamentals are clear or not that how exactly the type coercion because javascript is a loosely typed language so anything can be converted basically into anything so you should be very familiar with type coercion system if you want to prevent some bugs into your applications so that's the reason why these type of questions are asked in the interviews and that's where the end of this end uh, video is and if you are still here do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel so that you can watch all my videos on time thank you so much for watching i'll see you soon in the next one